Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremton News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Handrahan. Whitney has the evening off. We start with some breaking news. We have just received new video from Coeur d'Alene police showing the moments police say racial slurs were used against the Utah women's basketball team. A few days ago, the Coeur d'Alene City Prosecutor's Office decided not to charge the teen accused of using the slurs. During the March Madness tournament, the Utah team called police saying someone yelled racial slurs at them. The NCAA then moved them from their hotel in Coeur d'Alene to a new hotel in Spokane. In the days after, we talked to the Coeur d'Alene NAACP and they said North Idaho has not done enough to combat racial bias. The racial bias is such so intense. None of the organizations that say they stand for civil rights uh, in our community will even collaborate with me or my organization. Despite the pictures and video of the incident, prosecutors decided not to charge that teen involved. Krem 2's Nicole Hernandez is live in the newsroom tonight to show us that new video. Nicole? So, Mark, we've seen this picture or we've seen a picture before of the car police were able to track down. And now we actually have video of when that car drove by the Utah women's basketball team. We've known for a few days now what it is that 18 year old Anthony Myers yelled out of the car there. The prosecutor's office had it in their report from Monday, but it was so explicit there wasn't any way we could say any of it on television. And now, like you've heard, we've also had to cover most of the audio from the video as well. Even with this video, the Coeur d'Alene prosecutor's office decided not to charge Myers. They had considered three potential charges for Myers, one being disturbing the peace, also disorderly conduct and malicious harassment. Prosecutors said in their report, while they don't condone what Myers said, it wasn't enough to be a crime. Yesterday, though, we talked to a criminal defense attorney from Spokane. He isn't part of this case at all, but says based on what he's seen, he thinks it could have gone either way. You know, I think that uh, you put those two things together, the sexual component of it with the uh, racial component of it. Uh, I certainly think that it would have been well within his rights to try to prosecute this case. But uh, having considered all the facts uh, in his judgment, he determined he wasn't going to do that. So the prosecutor's office said it came down to intent. In order to charge for malicious harassment specifically, there needs to be a credible threat. And as for the other two charges, they said on a busy downtown street, yelling out the car window isn't tumultuous or offensive. And they say they couldn't prove there were any children around. In the newsroom, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. All right, Nicole, thank you very much. Spokane's mayor announced this afternoon she plans to remove the community safety levy from the upcoming August ballot. The mayor rolled out that levy last month as her plan to address the city's $50 million budget deficit. Graham 2's chief journalist Amanda Rowley joins us from live from downtown Spokane today to explain why the mayor decided now to postpone that levy. Amanda? Spokane Mayor Lisa Brown is pumping the brakes on the levy she believes will help fill the gap on the city's massive budget deficit. But to be clear, she says the levy isn't entirely off the table. Less than 10 days ago, Spokane's community safety levy was placed on the August ballot. Today, Mayor Brown wants to postpone the levy for additional analysis. This decision comes as the city is performing the mid-year budget review. I firmly believe we still need a community safety levy. Brown says she wants to make sure it's done right. That includes now taking more time to make sure the community understands the implications of the levy passage or failure. Doing this and meeting with all neighborhood councils by August, Brown says is too ambitious. Let's get through the mid-year budget review. Uh, we're putting forward proposals to the council on efficiencies and potential reductions that the council may or may not take. I think we need to get through that process and through this more extensive pro process of um, meeting with neighborhoods and community organizations. Today is a great day for taxpayers in our area. This afternoon, just down the street from City Hall, those who are against the levy considered its withdrawal from the ballot a victory. Among that group was Councilmember Michael Cathcart. I really just want to say thank you to Mayor Brown. Uh, she obviously heard the pleas and the concerns by certainly my constituents, which is why I have been so vocally opposed to this. He believes the last thing the city should be talking about right now is the levy going on to a future ballot. He believes there are other options available to explore how to balance the budget. We are now buying ourselves a significant amount of time to work through our budget issues, negotiate with the unions, uh, look at, at how we staff and, and what our fire model looks like. 
Mayor Brown says it may be possible to see the levy put on the November ballot, but she said that decision will be made after two things are completed. Additional community engagement and the mid year budget review is completed. Reporting in downtown Spokane, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. Turning to a developing story at this hour, Spokane police are investigating a reported shooting on 29th and Ray on the South Hill. Not much is known at this hour, but police say it happened at around 1.30 this afternoon and they could not confirm if anybody was hit. Drivers are being asked to avoid the area due to ongoing construction that is already slowing down traffic. The man who killed an elderly Deer Park man almost two years ago will spend the rest of his life in prison after being found guilty by a Spokane County judge. In December of 2022, Spokane County deputies found 83-year-old Richard Purdy dead in his home and noticed signs of burglary. Days later, Spokane police arrested Gary Alt. Investigators tied Alt to the murder through DNA found on a knife at the crime scene. Taking a look at tonight's top stories, Spokane County taking another step in its fight against the opioid crisis. Spokane County commissioners approved a little more than $7 million in new funding to expand care for people struggling with addiction. About $5 million of that will expand the Spokane Regional Stabilization Center to include immediate care. About a million dollars would go towards improving access to behavioral health services in the community. And $600,000 would help provide long-term housing and treatment for parents or caregivers of infants with neonatal abstinence syndrome. The Efreda Sports Complex burned down in an overnight fire. Firefighters said that building was completely engulfed by flames by the time they arrived at around 1030 last night. Crews believe the fire started in a nearby porta potty, then spread to the complex. Firefighters are investigating the cause of the fire tonight. All right, let's switch gears and talk weather now. Tonight we are keeping an eye on a major change in the weather pattern where cool wet weather moves out and warm sunny weather moves in. For more details, Let's get right over to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo. Well, Mark, in the next few days, we're really turning the corner. Does this mean we're going to be warm from here on out? Oh, wow, that's a tough, wow. We no longer have to worry about snow. I do believe temperatures still drop below freezing in some areas. I do also think we are pretty close to being done with that here in Spokane. We currently sit at 62 degrees with a mix of clouds and sun. 62 is about where we top out today. We've got that band of clouds set up right over the top of us. That's going to do a pretty decent job of just kind of keeping us pretty uniform as we move through the next, I would say, few hours. But here we go. Things aren't expected to change much as the sun goes down. Overnight, we'll get rid of that band of clouds, but not until early tomorrow morning. Because of that, what winds up happening is we stay a little warmer. Then the sun comes out. Then our temperatures soar. By tomorrow afternoon, we climb some 30 degrees from where we start the day. Mid 40s, low 40s, depending on where you are. By tomorrow afternoon, mid 70s, just about everywhere. 80s in central Washington. It is going to be a gorgeous day. You want that first 80 of the year? We'll just wait one more day. It looks like we get there in Spokane on Friday. Oh man, looking forward to all that, Jeremy. Thank you very much.